Hello, my name is Mathieu Ducrot. I work at the Bordeaux Imaging Center. Together with my colleagues Ludovic Lecomte, Jean Salamero, and César Valadez Cruz from Curit Institute in Paris, we will present you the implementation and specificities of our lattice light sheet microscopes operated in our core facilities. At the Bordeaux Imaging Center, we build a homemade lattice light sheet microscope. At Institut Curie, my colleagues use a commercial LLSM. Both systems are very similar in terms of perf performances. However, we will present a few differences in the operation and capabilities of the two setups. At the BIC, we applied lattice light sheet microscopy mainly to neuroscience and organoid research. While at Curie Institute, lattice light sheet is used for all types of single cell imaging research with a strong focus on membrane traffic. First, let's consider the motivation behind the development of lattice light sheet microscopy. While in most conventional light sheet fluorescent microscopes, the excitation plane is created by focusing a Gaussian intensity profile laser beam in one dimension. This can be achieved, for example, with a cylindrical lens as illustrated here. This results in an intrinsic optical sectioning of the sample. As the whole fluorescent plane is imaged at once onto the camera, without the need for point scanning, this method can be extremely fast. And the third advantage, common to all light sheet fluorescent microscopes, is the very low phototoxicity due to single plane illumination with a very low in excitation intensities. This is why light sheet fluorescent microscopy is success so successful, in particular in the field of developmental biology, as exemplified by this very nice time lapse of a developing zebrafish embryo. However, in conventional light sheet fluorescent microscopy, we face a fundamental drawback between the light sheet waste, the W0 here, and the depth of field, or the light sheet length. A strongly focused beam with a high numerical aperture lens will result in a thin light sheet, a small waste, but with a very short depth of field. On the other hand, a long light sheet will necessarily be thick, hence reducing the microscope axial resolution. So to conclude, a thin and long light sheet cannot be created with a Gaussian intensity profile laser beam. The specific lattice beam shaping of lattice light sheet microscope overcomes this limitation. Lattice light sheet microscopy was developed by Eric Betzik at HHMI Janilia Research Campus and first published in 2014. An optical lattice is a periodic pattern on non-diffractive beams. In theory, non-diffractive beams propagate without focusing nor diverging over very long distances. Thus, the lattice intensity profile remains constant along the propagation axis. In the specific case of lattice light sheet microscopy, the lattice pattern is created with a programmable diffractive element called a special light modulator. A particular stripe pattern is produced at the objective back aperture that results in a lattice or an array of non-diffractive beams parallel to each other in restricted to the XY sample plane. By dithering this pattern along the X-axis, we end up with a homogeneous light sheet of uniform thickness of less than one micron over distances from 10 to 70 microns, depending on the pattern applied at the objective back aperture. With this unique illumination profile, we, so we, we obtain a very high and uniform spatial resolution over an extended field of view, which is ideal for subcellular imaging of single cells or clusters of cells. Illumination intensities remain very low, which strongly reduce photo damage. This allows, for example, imaging of subcellular elements in early embryogenesis, as shown in this example here, of this developing C. elegans embryo, nicely imaged, with very high spatial resolution and temporal resolution. So to conclude, 
LLSM is an ideal technique for fast, gentle, high-resolution cellular imaging. In LLSM, the sample is mounted horizontally, but the imaging plane is tilted by 32 degrees with respect to the horizontal plane. We actually observe an oblique section of the sample. To acquire volumetric data, the most common method is to scan the sample horizontally with a piezo translation stage while the light sheet remains static, as illustrated here. So you see the stripes of the lattice, then the dithered lattice, and the sample that is going to be scanned across the static light sheet created in the lattice light sheet microscope. So to reconstruct the data in a correct way in the horizon in the orthogonal um, coordinate system, one need to take a, a step called the diskewing of the data. Each data is acquired at a different plane, S1, S2, and 3, S3, that is corresponding to a different axial position of the detection objective optical axis, and also that translate into a translation along the y-axis. So to compensate for this combined translation of along Z and Y, one need to skew or to shift each acquired plane by the amount of translation along the Y-axis. At the Bordeaux Imaging Center, we have reproduced the original lattice light sheet microscope designed by Eric Betzig, as displayed here. All the technical information necessary to build and operate this microscope is freely available from HHMI. Schematically, this microscope is composed of a laser combiner with four lasers. The lattice is created by a beam shaping unit composed of a special light modulator and an annular mask. The SLM diffracts the incoming light and forms the lattice pattern. The mask then cleans the pattern by removing all diffracted orders except the first one. Then, a scanning unit is used to translate the lattice along the z-axis to co-align it with the detection objective focal plane. Dithering along the x-axis is necessary to create a uniform light sheet. Typically, we program the SLM and choose the mask to create the light sheet that is approximately 20 micron long. The static light sheet profile can be recorded at the sample also, a point spread function is acquired before each experiment. Typical lateral and axial resolutions are around 270 and 520 nanometers, respectively. And now I hand the microphone to my colleague Jean Salamero, who will present the LLSM system installed at Institut Curie. Here is shown the commercial system installed at Institut Curie. Let's mention briefly that the system includes a particular illumination water objective with a 0.65 numerical aperture, is equipped with three laser lights and two SMOS cameras. As already mentioned, we were part of an early adopters program launched by the company. It gave us the opportunity to participate to the upgrading of the LLSM version 1. One of the first improvements was the mask wheel, which allows to change automatically the shape of the light sheet, meaning the pattern to apply depending on imaging modality or the type and size of sample. The version 2 permits also to control in real time both the chamber and objective temperatures using Peltier modules. That was quite essential when considering the diversity of applications in our scientific environment. Another implementation is a light sheet tracking function which allows, in our case, autofocus directly on the sample during the imaging sequence, which can be quite long. Finally, we now have an easy design in order to change the imaging chamber. We now have three of them, which allows to accommodate different sample sizes. We also now work on the installation of a precise gas control system and on the adaptation of a macrophilic system. As a brief yet imperfect comparison between lattice light sheet microscopy and spinning disk on focal imaging, we show here a study on live RPA1 stable cell line expressing life actin, where we choose to look at their relative performances 
for similar photo bleaching effects over time, as seen in the graph. The obvious difference appears for the number of images generated, allowing to acquire 60 plants per stack in lattice light sheet microscope, while only 14 planes are available in spending disk microscopy. Other acquisition parameters being as close as possible. Simple 3D reconstruction of one stack on the top of the, of the slide show that when you can get access to the full volume of a cell in lattice light sheet microscopy, spinning disk microscopy only allows imaging of a truncated cell. The graph below indicates the cumulative number of frames over time for each modalities, indicating the main advantage of LLSM in blue on loss of fluorescence and consequently on phototoxicity over time. If one wishes to give an overview of comparative performances between different imaging modalities and methods, such a table is by essence inexact and widely depends on optics and other instrumental elements. However, these indications are shown to illustrate what space-time resolution we could achieve with our setup in two imaging modalities, the usual square pattern versus the square pattern plus a structural elimination microscopy mode. The latest gives you an improvement of the lateral resolution, while no change in the actual one, and of course at the depend of the temporal resolution and bleaching phototoxic effects. The Curie Institute, we mainly use the lattice light sheet microscopy for live imaging at a single cell level. That starts with a rather classical sample preparation for live cell imaging under the hood. However, a particular attention must be paid to the cover slip characteristics and their cleaning. Those cover slips are coming from electron microscopy. They have a diameter of 5 mm, thickness between 0.13 and 0.16 mm. We clean them carefully, dip them in potassium hydroxide, sonicate them, dip them in mini-Q, water, sonicate them again, and keep them in absolute ethanol. In most cases, since we deal with living material, all preparation steps must be done in a sterile environment. The way you plate the cell for live cell imaging, of course, depends on both the cell type and of the experiment you wish to perform. However, in our case, as we wish to image unique cells with a particular elimination detection geometry of the lattice light sheet microscope, cell density is an issue. Here is shown a typical example where adherent cell lines such as HeLa cells, RPA1, MNT1 are plated 36 hours before image acquisition at a cell density of 150 to 200,000 cells per well containing the cover slips. Transient transfections such as by lipofection, siRNA treatment or baculovirus infection are usually performed 18 to 24 hours after in order to let the cell to adhere before a further overnight incubation at 37 degrees. That also depends on both the cell type, some of them being perfectly adherent after only a few hours. That also depends if you use stable cell line expressing your fluorescent protein type molecule of interest, if you use instant fluorescent probe, if and when you want to do drugs, if any, and so on. Let's insert the sample. After a last wash in fresh medium at 37 degrees, the cover slip is recovered and delicately placed in a sample widening support we specially designed in order to avoid the use of silicon grease while keeping safely the ceiling. Finally, the support is introduced in the sample chamber of the system filled with the lattice light sheet microscope media which served for the previous calibration step. In our system, a dedicated tool with screws ensures the stability of the overall mounting and its solidarity with the stage. Positioning of the sample stage onto imaging position and the reinitialization of the XYZ stage at a neutral home position is automatically driven through the acquisition software.
Now I will present how we mount organotypic hippocampal brain slices to image them under the homemade system at the Bordeaux Imaging Center. We use those 5mm diameter cover slips from Warner Instruments. We will place the cover slip at the tip of the following sample holder. We use silicone grease to glue the cover slips at the tip of the holder, as presented here. In our experiments, the grease did not show any adverse effect on the biological studies. Once the cover slip is pressed down onto the grease at the tip of the holder, we add a little bit of grease on top of the cover slip itself to make the brain slice adhere. This is the slice attached to a membrane we place the slice on a cutting mat very gently. We hydrate it with ACSF and then trim the edge of the membrane with a razor blade without touching the brain slice. Then we raise, we lift the membrane, dry the bottom part of the membrane and glue it onto the cover slip by gently pressing down onto the membrane without touching the brain slice. And now we are ready to transfer the sample to the microscope for imaging. The sample holder with the brain slice onto it is then screwed onto the sample Piaget stage for 3D acquisition. The stage is also mounted on an XYZ translation system for sample positioning. The sample is immersed and can be perfused. The sample chamber here contains approximately 7 ml of liquid. Its temperature, as well as the temperature of the objectives, can be controlled. Due to the limited space between the objectives, the sample translation volume is restricted to approximately plus minus 1 mm in the horizontal plane and plus minus 0.5 mm in the vertical direction. In lattice latch sheet, microscopic calibration steps are crucial before launching any series of acquisition. The system requires a realignment each time you start a new session and it is very sensitive to temperature changes. Our setup at the Curie is equipped with two cameras that monitor in real time the image of both the spatial light modulator and the mask. The CCD1 and CCD2 cameras conjugate respectively to the sample and the back pupil of the excitation objective. This helps in alignment and verification of the lattice light sheet pattern. Then we check the bezel mode and we realign the airy spot, as shown in this example, to obtain concentric cycles. We verify the multi bezel pattern. We then check the image quality after the annular mask with the CCD2 camera. To visualize the light sheet, we use a die that, as a compromise, corresponds to the excitation wavelengths we mostly use, meaning FYTC with a 488 nanometer laser beam. Here is the light sheet in bezel mode. We use green, red or deep red spherical beads of 0.1 micrometer diameters. They will be used to verify each element sensitive to alignment. For that, we make more than 100 plans with a 0.1 micrometer step size for next final calibration steps. We scan the bead with a Galvo mirror to make sure it is properly aligned in XZ and YZ. We then realize a PSF with the same bead, but this time with a detection objective in order to check its symmetry when visualized in XZ or YZ. Misalignment reflecting spherical aberrations can be corrected with the color of the objective. Finally, 
we scan simultaneously the light sheet and the detection objective. As already mentioned by Mathieu, raw images acquired in lattice light sheet microscope need to be deskew. In our workflow, after the deskew, we systematically use denoising. We also use deconvolution based on the PSF measured on fluorescent beads previously during the calibration. As already said by Mathieu at the Curie Institute, the lattice light sheet microscope is used by diverse teams to investigate dynamic biological mechanisms at the single cell level. This stands for deciphering and comparing the diverse endocytic roots, as illustrated here on right for internalization of Q dots linked to galactin 3, exocytosis events, such as transfer and recycling, as seen in the center movie, or coincidence of molecular actors involved in the coordination of multiple mechanisms, such as shown on the left for recycling of endosomes and cytoskeleton remodeling in moving cells. Most of this type of data require strong 5D analysis and representation. One of the obvious advantages of lattice light sheet microscope is to objectively visualize 3D displacement of cellular element at the wall cell level with one of the best compromise in terms of time and space resolution. For instance, you can see here the spatial distribution of the average speed and maximum speed of galactin 3 ato 647 n after segmentation and tracking treatment, which will be detailed in the presentation by César Valadez Cruz. And now I would like to present to you the addition of a photomanipulation pass onto the lattice light sheet microscope at the Bordeaux Imaging Center. What is our motivation? Well, with our current setup, we can image neuronal morphology in 3D with a very high spatial temporal resolution, as shown here on the left with the TD tomato cytosolic labeling of dendrites in a brain slice. We can also image functional activity, such as spontaneous calcium activity in astrocytes, as shown here on the right with the GCAM6F spontaneous activity in this astrocyte. However, Many experiments require a local stimulation or a local measurement of a biophysical phenomenon. Therefore, we chose to develop an optical photomanipulation module into the lattice light sheet microscope. With this tool combined with a very high imaging quality of lattice light sheet, researchers can now tackle biological questions they could not address until now. We split the laser combiner output in a second pass that is used for photo manipulation. A pair of XY galvanometers is used to target the beam at a user-specific position, such as, for example, here, a specific spine in this neuron. A mechanical shutter can be used to block the beam when we are in imaging mode. The photo manipulation module can be used either for FRAP, for encaging, for photo activation, photo conversion, or photo ablation experiments. Here we show two examples of applications for encaging on the left and FRAP on the right. We encaged MNI glutamate near a spine on, in a dendrite expressing GCAM6F. A single spot a 405 nanometer laser was illuminated for 20 milliseconds. A flash of calcium rise could be detected immediately after the encaging pulse. The false color image on the right side of this panel shows the delta F over F increase due to the calcium influx in the spine just after encaging. The calcium rise is mainly, is mainly localized to a single spine in this case. On the right panel, we show the use of the photomanipulation module for FRAP to measure AMPA receptors diffusion. AMPA receptors are labeled at the membrane by an external fluorescent dye. We photobleach this dye at a single spine, as shown here. and observe 
the return of fluorescence that is due to the diffusion of membrane receptors in the vicinity of the spine. We measure the recovery rate and the amplitude of this recovery that are indicative of the local receptor's diffusion mechanisms. And now Jean will discuss the data analysis and management that was developed at the Curie Institute for their lattice light sheet microscope data. Slidebook is a software solution provided by 3i in the PC of the lattice light sheet microscope. It includes some solutions for direct visualization, including DISQ and 3D reconstruction, but it is very time consuming and does not allow multiple tasks. It should be mentioned that the very recent slidebook upgrade make it possible to DISQ faster the raw image using GPU. Instead, we often use the Lattice Light Sheet Post Processing Utility, LLSPI, which was developed by Tale Lambert from Harvard Medical School. LLSPI is a Python library dedicated to light sheet data processing. It extends the QDAT decove initially created in the Betsy Lab, adding features that auto-detect experimental parameter from the data folder structure and metadata, thus minimizing user input. Moreover, LLSPI allows batch processing for DSQ, denoising, and deconvolution. Then, for 3D visualization, we use Pimagine, integrated in LLSPI, and which was developed by Martin Wegert at EPFL. It's a Python package to interactively visualize and process time-lapse volumetric data. Finally, Napari, which was developed after Spimagine, is a fast, interactive, multidimensional image viewer. It is designed for browsing, annotating, and analyzing large datasets. On top, it allows merge image visualization from multiple channels, while Spimagine do not. However, one challenge we all face with light sheet microscopy is then the data volume to be managed and analyzed. Here is a solution we developed at the Curie Institute. We use a buffer server, we call it LLSM server, directly connected to the PC of the LLSM, allowing a sufficient transfer flow. One option is to reconstruct and export the images to the LLSM server after translation from the client format into point .tiff on the LLSM PC. In fact, we prefer to export TIFF images directly to the LLSM server which is linked to a powerful workstation one, allowing us to use LLSPI, Napari, and other software, much better for batch post-processing, such as reconstruction image optimization, segmentation, or tracking analysis. However, it is also useful to keep access to visualization tools, notably in 3D, as a preview. For this, we use the BioImage IT application, previously developed in the frame of France Bioimaging, for fast reconstruction, deconvolution, and denoising, in another workstation, also directly connected at 10 gigabytes and close to the setup. Finally, we also open a shared part of the LSM server, allowing first an access to external users to their data in an organized manner and eventually to some processing tools, and second, final transfer of selected data to our institutional IT storage center and network. To conclude this practical course on lattice light sheet microscopy, we propose here a synthesis of the main advantages and disadvantages of this technique. In short, lattice light sheet microscopy combines very high spatial and temporal resolutions over extended depth of field with very low photobleaching and phototoxicity. On the other hand, it is not a simple turnkey microscope. It requires good training to carefully align part of the optical system. Temperature stabilization is also essential. Failing to follow these rules will result in a degraded spatial resolution. Also, the field of view is quite small and cannot be modified. The sample size and range of motion is limited to approximately one millimeter. That being said, the great performance of lattice light sheet microscope still make it probably the best microscope for high resolution, fast 3D imaging of intracellular dynamics. 
please find here some useful websites related to lattice-light sheet microscopy. Thank you for your attention.